I'm the co-author of Open Index Protocol and one of the co-founders of Alexandria. Um, the team that built the, the Open Index Protocol spec is the same team that built Alexandria. It's really the first browser for the spec. You can think of it like the search all, where uh, Chris's thing shows property rights and Davi shows scientific data. Alexandria shows everything. So what else can Open Index Protocol do? What other kinds of data can it do? Well, the thing that I am personally most excited about are um, movies, music, video, the kinds of things that these companies do. But why would they want to use it? <laughs> because we know that it being censorship resistant and being tremendously more efficient isn't going to be enough. It has to have financial incentive. So I'm going to talk with you about the incentive structure of OIP and introduce the multi-stakeholder incentive model that Chris mentioned. Um, and what that model does is it creates competition at both the application layer and the protocol layer in the system. So as we all know here today, there are huge problems in the current fractured system. This system has business models built upon it that act as walled gardens that restrict our access to content and information. We may chase a platform, I mean an artist, from one platform to another, but then our favorite smart list algorithm is on one platform and the artist is on the other, or we want to watch a movie and we have to remember, is it on Hulu or Netflix or Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, right? And what's interesting is that we see these same patterns when we look at the history of the web, or of the internet, excuse me. It was before the web that we had these walled gardens, AOL, Prodigy, CompuServe. If I was an AOL user and you were a CompuServe user, we couldn't interact. It was the web that gave us this open space where we could all connect. And it worked because anyone could participate. It was a permissionless system. But it wasn't a scalable solution. Everybody that wants to share a video or a recipe or a song isn't likely to spin up their own server. And so services were built to handle the complicated back-end stuff for users in order to help the web scale. And scale it did. The World Wide Web is the best example of the importance of competition at the application layer. One protocol with more than a billion applications built on it. But as the web grew, it became more and more centralized. Users don't control their own stuff because they don't control their own servers. We also run into these walls when we're trying to share content in this current system. So as a creator, to get my content out into the world, I have to have an individual relationship with each distribution channel I work with. I have to surrender. Um, control of my content to them, and I have to accept whatever terms of use they dictate to me and whatever pricing model they dictate to me. And in exchange, all they do is distribute my content inside of their one walled garden platform. With the Open Index Protocol model, I'm going to publish a single version of my content, and any platform can display and sell it for me according to my terms of use. It could be a major front-end service, like one of the ones that we were looking at at the beginning. It could be you on your personal blog. It could be somebody that you're following on social media. And if any of those result in a sale, I get paid directly. And so what this means for content creators is that there are all kinds of wonderful new ways that content can be monetized. I can monetize it by displaying it in social media for a micropayment. I can monetize iterative content or sampling of my content, and I control all of my terms of use. So because the system right now is so wildly inefficient, those companies have built this vast private infrastructure. And much of the content that they host is redundantly hosted by the other companies. Think about um, the catalogs of Apple Music and Spotify, right? but they do not share resources. So not only is this bad for the companies because it's expensive and inefficient, it's bad for users because companies are competing for a business based on what's in their catalogs, not based on the quality of the service that they're offering us, like Devin was talking about. And as we all know, <laughs> This service has been, I mean, this system, this broken system, has been monetized by advertising and data mining, which is really a losing proposition for everyone involved. I love this quote from Jaron Lerner. 
We cannot have a society in which if two people wish to communicate, the only way that can happen is if it's financed by a third person who wishes to manipulate them. It just really sums it all up, right? So has anyone here today struggled in this current system? Have you been deplatformed, demonetized? Yeah? Have you noticed content that you wanted to watch was taken off of a platform? Yeah? Yeah. These are things that we're really worried about, right? And as we've been building our tech over these last four years, there has been this growing sense that people are ready to make a leap to something new. We're all gathered here now at the Decentralized Web Summit because we are in the midst of a generational format shift. The future will be decentralized. But when it comes to content distribution in particular, I believe that we're in the midst of a significant format shift. I'm not talking about like an intra format shift moving from MP3 to FLAC, I'm talking about the kind of generational format shift of moving from physical distribution to digital distribution. This format shift started 20 years ago with Napster, but it hasn't been completed because there hasn't been a standard that was open and flexible enough that was capable of serving the needs of the entire industry. And so we're in this murky middle of the transition and you really see that in the business models because in some revenue, uh, in some channels, uh, the physical sales are still as much as 50%. Companies like Netflix, Spotify, SoundCloud, they have proven that there is great demand for digital content. But the problems in this current system are reaching a fever pitch and we are on the precipice. We are standing at that moment in time when giant companies will fall and visionary companies will rise based on how they react to this. So let's talk about how value flows through the system. As everybody knows, Blockchain has changed the way that value flows through these kinds of systems and how value is captured. A couple of years ago, an analyst at Union Square Ventures at the time, Joel Manegro, wrote this article that became really important in the blockchain community to talk about these ideas. He called it fat protocols. And what he meant by this is that in the old generation of protocols, there was no value transmission at the protocol layer. And so all of the opportunity for value capture was at the application layer, and that's why we ended up in this walled garden system. In uh, Bitcoin, he said that the opportunity is at the protocol layer, the FAT protocol. Because when you think about, um, if you've ever thought about trying to monetize a wallet, you understand this problem, right? When you compare Coinbase to the market cap of Bitcoin, right? Coinbase can only offer value add services, like changing dollars for Bitcoins, because the protocol itself is actually doing the work, and that's where the opportunity for value capture is. So today, I am very proud to be introducing the salutary protocol model. Salutary protocols create opportunity for value capture at both the application layer and the protocol layer. They maximize efficiency by separating the subjective work from the objective work, and they empower the marketplace of users to define their own combinations of services and pricing. So by separating the objective work into the protocol layer, these are the things that are like fungible commodities, things like uh, security for the blockchain, things like storage and distribution, fungible commodities that can be objectively measured. And at the application layer, these are things like quality of the user experience. So the discovery that we were talking about, the filtering algorithms, those kinds of things. And this is what's so exciting about this model is it really flips it on its head, where we're not competing based on the catalogs anymore, we're competing based on the quality of the user experience. Another example of a salutary protocol is Lightning Network. Um, Lightning Network creates incentives for competition at the application layer between the channel operators. Channel operators will compete to serve different parts of the market by offering a variety of, of options between settlement reliability, blockchain settlement frequency, um, transaction amount size, and channel operators can also function as market makers if a node goes offline to fill in that gap. Okay, so these are the various ways that uh, Alexandria participates in the OIP system. So at the application layer, the browser gets a cut of all of the sales that it does as the platform. And if we do marketing, like we were talking about, it's like an Amazon affiliate program. So if we send out marketing links that then result in sales, we get that affiliate cut. And that's at the application layer. Then we'll also do things to help support the services. So that's will be securing the blockchain, providing file storage and distribution, and those revenue streams come through at the protocol layer. 
So this is what the value flow looks like. So let's say at the very top up there, Alice puts in, puts up a song, and she says that she's going to charge a dollar for it. Well, over here is Alice doing the whole thing herself. So Alice hosts it on her own private server. She's the influencer who drives the sale. When somebody buys it, Alice gets that whole dollar. And over here on the right side is if she gets the maximum support from the community. So if a different platform other than Alice sells it for her, and if, a market, if an influencer other than that platform drives that sale, then each of those would get their percentage cuts, and Alice would get her cut. 